Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here bringing you this video today from my home office in Jerusalem. And for this particular video, I wanted to give a little bit of insight into what I do on a day-to-day -day basis as a marketing communications professional, what's really involved in marketing communications if you're thinking about taking this as a career path, and where you might typically end up working if you uh, work in marketing communications. So my experience in marketing communications dates back from basically my first job after college. I actually studied law in university in Ireland, um, but during the course of my time as a student, I got increasingly sucked into what really is my passion, which is communications. I became a very active student journalist. I set up my own student news website, and uh, while sort of trying not to flunk out of my law degree, ended up actually realizing that journalism was something I was really, really interested in doing. Um, I actually then studied journalism in the UK, but my first job after graduating from uh, college or really from two different colleges was um, being a marketing communications manager for a political technology startup based in Cork in Ireland. Now we were a very, very small team. I was actually the fourth hire on the team. So it was literally um, a table full of people. And that actually tells you a little bit already about marketing communications. Now, what I'm gonna be talking about in this video is very much off the cuff. I have a few notes of things I want to cover here, um, but I'm just gonna try uh, keep it sort of non-corporate and give you guys uh, my two cents on what it's actually really been like. So marketing communications is really a hybrid job, I would say, of what have typically been two silos in marketing, and two silos don't really need to be silos in a lot of cases. That is marketing and communication. So, if you think about more traditionally oriented companies, you would have the marketing team responsible for you know, planning out marketing activities, um, engaging in marketing activities, and doing everything that would be thought of as pertaining to marketing. And then communications that would kind of have a bit of ownership over the brand image, but they would be the people responsible for doing all the comms work, such as what is thought of as PR. And PR is not just publicity, there's a lot more to PR than publicity, but those would be often working side by side, but they might be different teams with different managers, and then reporting uh, to, let's say, a VP of marketing. So marketing communications is a field, I think there's really two ways to define it or look at it. The first way is saying, well, it's a, uh, it's a mushing together of marketing and communications responsibilities. So it's just what the marketing people would do, what the communications people would do. In small companies, it's the Marcom person who do it. Now I've heard it called Marcoms, Marcom, marketing com, a few different variations, but it usually, however people choose to uh, you know, combine it into one word, they're trying to describe much the same job. Now the second way to look at it is, well, you can define marketing communications as really any communication emanating from a business that is intended for marketing, right? That's what the words mean, marketing communications. Take your communications, take the communications that are uh, intended for marketing and all that stuff, which might be content marketing, social media, etc., is the responsibility of the marketing communications person. I actually don't like that definition as well because in your average small company, it's pretty safe to say that 90% of the communications are probably marketing oriented, right? In larger organizations, you might have an internal communications function, somebody trying to um, coordinate communications within the team, or you might have an investor relations function, somebody responsible for liaising with the company's investors if it's a public concern. But in your average small company, there really may be no uh, group of, no, there, there might be nothing in that Venn diagram that is within communications that really doesn't have a marketing slant, you know? Again, other, other type of communications might be stuff like public affairs, liaison with public bodies. But let's take your average nimble tech startup, and that's where I've spent most of my career to date working. The work of the marketing communications person is more just a uh, amalgamism of marketing and communications. So based on what I've seen, based on the type of companies I've worked for and contracted for, I would say that marketing communications tends to be a position that exists primarily within smaller companies because when companies kind of scale from startup size, small size to medium size, 
at that point they begin to take a very small lean marketing team and then break it back out into those silos so maybe the marcom person was doing social media and now there's a social media hire and there's a social media agency and there's a pr agency commonly gets brought into the picture around that stage and now the marketing communications person just kind of has oversight or they might split out into a communications team. So what I think uh, when I think about what companies hire for marketing communications, I think it's probably smaller companies at the medium size of scale. I think you see the split happening. And then when you get to the large company size scale, ironically, you often see a VP of marketing communications or even an SVP of marketing communications because the organizations got to the point that there's enough layers uh, in the hierarchy or the food chain that the marketing person and the communications person then might report to a SVP of marketing communications who might uh, you know respond report to the director of marketing so sometimes you have that kind of funny situation that you have this job title and position in small companies in enterprises and not so much in the big kind of uh, middle of the road uh, companies so what just just to sort of uh, get down to a more concrete level what would be jobs that a marcom person might do on a daily basis so i run marketing communications for a political technology startup that was my first job out of college for a industrial iot company in israel which was very very random it was uh, basically selling to governments and municipalities uh, the sensors they would put into critical infrastructure stuff like wastewater applications like sewers so very very different uh, from a um, political technology company but that's actually something I really enjoy about working in marketing and communications is that you're not necessarily over time you do tend to pick up or develop expertise in an industry but you don't necessarily have to stay within that industry for your entire career it's more that I see it more as a skill set I'm developing and carrying with me between jobs. So um, I worked at an I, I IoT company, the II stands for Industrial IoT, and then I left that to basically start my own business. I've been doing that for uh, about three years after I left the I IoT company, and my latest job is uh, running communications for uh, Sir Ronald Cohen, who is a uh, philanthropist and um, for an individual in other words as opposed to doing it for a company and I would love at some point maybe after I've been in the job for um, a year hoping I make it to that point I'd love to do a video about what it's like doing communications for an individual because it's actually pretty much the first time I've done this versus doing it for an agency or a company which I've done an awful lot of uh, it's been very interesting so far and I think that after a year I'll have a few insights to share um, in the format of a video. So what are some kind of day-to-day -day tasks that Marcom people would do? So if we take that broader definition of, well, it's marketing and communications, there would be a lot subsumed into that. So content marketing is kind of uh, fits within inbound marketing and inbound is now the kind of go-to methodology for most companies. So a lot of time will be taken up with content creation. You might have um, in that kind of typical structure, a content writer working under you as the Marcom manager, or you might be the uh, content writer, the unofficial content writer. You might work with freelancers, but the marketing communications person would kind of be the person holding that function and tying it all together to make sure it got done. And ideally got done with a strategy because it's very easy for companies to just go uh, sort of uh, creating as much content as possible without putting any strategic thought into it. And it almost never works out well. Um, digital marketing, in my experience, now this may just be my own experience. Digital marketing is what I always uh, used to tell clients. That's the one thing I'm just not that into. I understand the importance of SEO, but it's really, I'm more of a creative um, than a numbers guy. So in, when I've worked in marketing teams, I've typically outsourced the digital marketing and SEO aspect to experts. I don't know if that's just me or that's typical, but for me, as marketing communications, I prefer to keep my focus on brand identity, brand message, communications, and then all the kind of content creation flowing from that, that it should really be all aligned with that uh, set of values. Um, then on the communications side of things, we'd have maybe event management can be something that marketing communications folks can step in with. And again, because this job is so varied, 
And by the way, that's what I actually really enjoy about it. That might be another agency relationship. So you might actually outsource the actual, uh, you know, find details of running an event to a professional event manager or event management team, but you'd kind of be the point of contact for the company's marketing team. <clears throat> I mentioned earlier that marketing communications folks uh, commonly work in smaller teams or that's been my experience. And does that mean they're the top dog in marketing? In my experience, it's usually one layer, even at that relatively small la layer of scale, it might be one layer beneath the VP of marketing. So the answer is no. The answer, the answer to what might be a career progression in that kind of environment look like, I would say would probably be from the Marcom manager to the VP of marketing. What would the VP of marketing do that the Marcom manager wouldn't do? Well, as I hope I've described, the Marcom ma management day-to-day -day job can actually be really, really busy. You've got a lot of deliverables, you've got your social media, your content marketing, perhaps your event management, your communications work, your PR work. So that person's going to be busy. And the VP of marketing can be someone a little bit uh, more senior to that person who spent their time getting uh, their hands dirty with all these activities and can now focus on more strategic meetings, perhaps interfacing with the rest of the VPs or the CEO in that company. Um, so that, that's the progression, which was, uh, what, which was uh, what I was going for. And finally, who might you work for? Well, I think I've already covered that. There's definitely a large demand for uh, marketing. There is a large demand for content writing, particularly in the market I'm based in here in Israel. I think that's a great foot in the door for people. I personally, this is just, again, my opinion. I've never held a content writing job or that is my job title. I'm someone who personally en enjoys knowing a little about a lot. And I think that that's uh, probably, uh, there's, there's a reason that I ended up doing uh, this and not focusing really nichely on content marketing. I like trying to see the big picture and doing a little bit of things. I would probably find focusing 100% of my time on content marketing very boring. I like a little bit of travel in my jobs. Uh, I don't, I've never been in a job where I'm like on the road all the time and I would really hate that, uh, like maybe a sales rep job, but I like um, jobs where you occasionally go to conferences, organize events, and I think that that can be definitely fall under the purview of a marketing communications person. Um, so in terms of who this job, who you could work for, I think it's more a case of deciding if you're going into marketing, do you want to work on digital marketing? Do you want to work in a uh, PR agency environment and go the communications route? Then go in-house because that is a different career path. It's definitely maybe more established. Whereas I'd say the potential negative of marketing communications is you might find yourself a little bit hamstrung in terms of the size of organizations you could work for and potentially also the type of orgs. There's also probably a little bit of a bias in Marcom towards tech companies. So that's my experience. Those companies that are a bit more willing to embrace untraditional uh, layouts. Um, I didn't even touch upon video marketing. That's really been a big uh, part of my work for uh, the past number of years, or I've seen video coming more and more into marketing and how that would fit into your role as a marketing manager. Well, you might actually be the guy holding the tripod and camera and uh, recording videos for your company's YouTube channel, or you might be doing a bit of that, but also then outsourcing. So it's kind of the same pattern, whatever uh, discrete marketing function that we really look at. So I hope that's given you a bit of a flavor. Again, this wasn't a sort of corporate video about here's what here's what it's like to join a marketing team. I wanted to try give a little bit more of a real flavor for what's actually entailed in the job. Do I enjoy it? I actually really enjoy it. Um, as I mentioned at the start of this video, um, it, it didn't really take long for me when I was studying my law degree because it sounded responsible and sophisticated, I think, to realize I love communicating. I originally planned to go into journalism, but I also enjoy uh, communicating stories, whether those are for corporates or even the type of work I'm doing now is actually more in the nonprofit space, more mission focused. And that's actually um, a transition I really, really enjoyed. I love being able to do a little bit of communications. I've definitely built up skill sets in terms of PR, you know, press release writing, media monitoring, uh, you know, uh, analyst relations, media relations, then doing a lot of content creation and then picking up little bits. I think that's one of the beauties of actually working in a um, hub and spoke environment, outsourcing work to agencies is that you actually sometimes get to learn from the external people, the contractors you're working for. So I really enjoy it and I definitely recommend it. 
My friends, I think, all believe that I'm a content writer and I don't usually have the patience to explain to folks at, uh, for 15 minutes uh, the nuances of what that is. But if you are interested in this field, I'll put a link to my LinkedIn profile in this uh, video description because it's professionally focused. And um, I always like having conversations with uh, people doing the same thing as me. Uh, hope this video was useful. Thank you guys for watching. And if you'd like to get more content from me, please hit the subscribe button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.